try to take the advantage of the many data uh, already collected in China and also new data to be collected to use this system approach to study the dramatic uh, social environmental changes on um, people's behavior and then the other house of time. Couple pictures showing the change in China. Uh, this shows the number of cars in Beijing, so it's very lucky, and also the way how people try uh, internal transportation 20 years ago, let's go to these cars. And then I went into the other fast food restaurant close. This is uh, currently for I do say uh, from the first store in 1997 to uh, 210 and 3000. And then this shows you the number of people uh, fly in the, the cities. Uh, <coughs> So in conclusion, uh, the presence of the BC and NCD are considerably across the world region, countries, and also between groups even within the country. Over the past few decades, the prevalence has increased uh, in almost all industrial countries and many other countries, especially those uh, traditional uh, societies. Some changes can be very dramatic. Uh, multiple factors, in particular social and environmental behavior factors, have contributed to uh, this epidemic, but still our understanding is still poorly understood. What's the right contribution? What's the key directors to today? Whether it's diet or physical activity, patient is playing a more important role. And then we all realize it's very important uh, to have a uh, health promotion program, uh, especially for the young people, how to do it so effectively and sustainably. We do not have all the answers yet. That's why we see many unanswered questions, challenges, but also great opportunities, especially for uh, collaboration and for younger generation. I do want to to send many of the funders who make it possible for us to research, especially at the private university. Without funding, they could not do research, they could not have a job. So that's very important to us. Okay, so now I open, and I'm sorry, my uh, presentation took a little bit longer. Maybe also because at the beginning we did have a table with a few minutes, but I hope this will have some time for some questions. Also, I'm going to share with you a photo here, that's my two lovely boys. <laughs> That I'm very young, now they are seven, uh, eight year old and six year old. Thank you. So, open it up for questions for a few minutes. Please. So, uh, so, you have a lot of experience you've done, and, and out of this big report, you, you have a, you've made some insights. And the question is, is you know, if, if you were going to try and change one Policy um, related to obesity. What you know? How how would you? What would you target? Um, we can't change genetics. We'll take that as a given. Um, so you know, school-based approach. Uh, you know, changing the, the, the built environment. You know, because a lot of these things, when people look at them, they, they seem to have uh, uh, um, individually small effects. But you know, it's the question is, you know, how how do you put it together? Do you, Wonderful question, uh, but also very challenging question. I should share with you. I think that's a question I have been thinking. I want to give you an indirect answer first, and then I will give you a direct answer. My indirect uh, my indirect answer is actually if you ask that question, the correct answer I know many people will say, okay, let's try to have a comprehensive intervention approach, means you try to do a lot of things. But also to think about how to answer or resolve a real complicated public health problem. Actually, comprehensive approach sometimes may not be the best choice because it's very costly, very difficult. You can imagine you may have tell parents many messages, they may forget also, they will do nothing. If you just tell them one simple message, if they will do it, after that, that can make an impact. This may be also the way how we try to look at some of the solutions for a basic open CD as a society. There may be a couple of things. It's also why the system of choice to me is very appealing. System approach allow you to try to potentially look at many factors and then you identify what's the kind of uh, point you want to target, uh, also what's the uh, potential outcome and the cost, and then uh, rec make a recommendation and then you take the, uh, take the action. So that's the indirect answer. The direct answer is I think, uh, actually I think about two ways. One is, I do think that school is a very important target for some policy at the nation. Um, school lunch, I think that's a very important target. In the United States, there have already been a lot of things going on, including what the uh, USDA have been doing to set up the standard. On the other hand, in this country, because of the, the political system, etc., the influence of the federal agency on the local uh, school district, there's some in 
direct impact or also indirect uh, of the challenges the individual uh, through the uh, district they may face. So maybe uh, the government or the support can be stronger to take more vigorous approach. The second one, my uh, advocacy is the economic approach. I think overall you look at the whole world, in Europe or other developing countries, in the United States, food is too cheap compared to people's income. Why? Why food in the United States? The price is so low. And why for sure we saw this country is very productive, very efficient, we produce a lot of food. But on the other hand, there are many other government policies behind it. Make it possible here for this trip to many other countries. And, and then, for sure, that's a very important driving factor for overall consumption. But uh, again, that's not a public house or easy hospital. A lot of industry will be handled. Please. Hi, I have a very similar question. It's not about policy, but it's about programs. Been reading your reviews of uh, uh, this was published in pediatrics and trying to trying to find a program that could be widely disseminated or should be widely disseminated. What which program would you pick? Okay, uh, <clears throat> I will tell you one simple answer. There is no program I will pick. I can tell you the reason why I don't want to make anyone. Including our colleagues at Harvard, including our colleagues at Maybe at Hopkins, because they have been investing their career, they have been arguing their program is very successful. You have the pathway study, you have the cash study, and also you increasingly have uh, new studies being conducted. I think the other reason is I don't think any of the uh, program uh, they really provide the very convincing results. This can be widely this. Uh, this and can be sustainable. Many of those are research programs. Uh, on the other hand, that's also why I want to argue. I feel very sad as a researcher. That's also why I think I share the view. I sometimes feel I lost my excitement. Many researchers, okay, we got a lawyer, we conducted research, we got a paper published, and then we move on. Who actually will try to implement those research? Actually, if you do, who will support your work? How you develop your career? That's the bigger challenge, I say. Society, even though right now there are the original support or argument for translation research, but they are not enough. So that's part of uh, also what I mean. We have been doing, uh, making some of the effort related to that comprehensive uh, review of meta analysis. We want to try to answer some of these questions. We try to look at all these different, let uh, say, programs to uh, look at uh, what program may be more effective or data based or physical activity based or the so called. Second, also when I look at the lessons we may learn from the tobacco control field, I think people in the United States should feel very proud. We have been doing very well in terms of tobacco control. You may even go to, I think, Europe, you say, what well, they are doing right now there. They are not so successful. But why in the United States they are so successful in tobacco control? 
uh, there are some literature there. Uh, my understanding is I think the strong government role, the regulation on price, uh, uh, regulation on marketing, regulation on very consumer, and then that also develops a social norm, social culture, make this country very successful. I do think that the uh, obesity field, uh, we can have a lot of things to learn from the tobacco field. On the other hand, we do also argue uh, obesity is much more complicated because tobacco, we can argue there's no, almost no benefits of it. And also, you, you live a very good life without smoking. Obesity is different. It's part of related to eating. People have to eat. A lot of culture benefit related to eating. And also, your, for sure, it's a personal decision. It's complicated. But that's what I want to say. The system of approach uh, offer us to think about uh, these broader issues, the related factors, and also the potential solutions. I think still right now people may still feel education, or public health education, is important. The individual responsibility that's important. But I, I also feel we have enough evidence to tell us um, we should think about it differently and also take a different approach. Look at the promotion for vegetable and food consumption, the so-called five-day program. We have been working on that for many, many years, and also huge investment, not much progress at all. Yes, uh, how do you feel the recent classification of obesity as a disease will affect collaborative research as it's going forward? I'm sorry, can you be a little bit louder? So you sure I can hear you? Uh, how do you feel? How do you feel the uh, recent classification of obesity as a disease will affect collaborative uh, efforts going forward? Uh, excellent question. I want to say simply, I think that we will have a very, very favorable positive impact for future collaboration, for investment, from multiple sectors in the society. On the other hand, I should also share with you. I feel very disappointed because some of you may not know this. Actually, more than 13 years ago, the WHO released a report in the year of 2000. In that report, the WHO already classified obesity as a disease. After 10 years here in the United States, we just started to uh, see that as a disease. And also, last week, uh, I gave a talk at another university, top university, among the audit asked them who of them think obesity is a disease, only less than half of the audience. CBC, the disease. That's a public, uh, that's a house uh, community. Thank you. Charles, do you have a question? Yeah, let's do one more question and then we'll. So, uh, uh, so the question is is, is what is a, a public health approach uh, at diametrically opposed to having an, uh, a personalized medicine approach to um, uh, obesity prevention or treatment? I mean, so I'm just wondering if, you know, the public health approaches haven't been working. Do we need to switch it to maybe a personalized medicine approach, you know, where we target the individual, not the, not the fixed environment? I'm just that. Uh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, I don't think that uh, we should try to separate the two. I think, uh, okay, on one hand, it's a philosophy a question or thinking, the other way practical. Even many of the so-called public health approach or policy we take, they still need to be implemented at, uh, let's say, individual level. Right? If we talk about many of the public health uh, problems, especially infectious disease, I think why we have been doing so successful is vaccine. Right? That's on one hand, we see that population approach. On the other hand, you need to mobilize or have the individual to go to take the vaccine and also to take some of their own approach to protect themselves. And then uh, regarding uh, chronic disease, on one hand, sure, we argue, okay, we should make the change in the environment, the policy. In fact, a, a current disease, again, down to the end, still I think that you know a lot of personal choice. What people eat, how much exercise people may take. In this regard, I still think there are a lot of personal decisions. Even though it's highly genetically de defined. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> A midsummer treat. So. <laughs>